Hello and very good evening. We're coming to you live from Rwanda's capital here in Kigali. And many thanks indeed for joining us on tonight's news on Rwanda TV. I'm Ethan Toshobia and these are the top stories tonight. President Paul Kagame believes that access to internet connection is key to unlocking Africa's digital transformation. The National Cyber Security Authority says that Rwanda has already invested heavily in the field of information security, which puts her in the top 10 safest countries in Africa in terms of technology. International law analysts note that Rwanda's decision to accept immigrants from the UK defines Rwanda's value for humanity. Many thanks indeed for joining us for tonight's broadcast on Rwanda TV. I'm Ethan Tashobia. President Paul Kagame believes that access to internet connection is key to unlocking Africa's digital transformation. The head of state made the remarks at the World Bank fireside chart on digital revolution, discussing the power of digital and its impact on Rwanda, Africa, and the global development as a whole, alongside with the World Bank president, David Malpes. We have this report. President Paul Kagame on Wednesday joined the president of the World Bank Group, David Malpas, for a fireside chat on the digital revolution, discussing the power of digital and its impact in Rwanda, Africa, and on global development as a whole. During the discussions, President Kagame noted that over the years, Africa's digital transformation has been driven in particular by mobile financial services. However, he observed that there are still limitations to the accessing of high-speed internet on smartphones of the majority of the African people. Over the years, Africa's digital transformation has been uh, driven in particular by mobile financial services. Africa is in many ways a global pioneer in this sector. 80% of Africa's population has a mobile phone, but not everyone has access to high-speed internet on a smartphone, yet broadband is the key to unlocking the digital transformation. On our continent, a major challenge continues to be the insufficient reach of fiber optic cables in rural areas. So if we address, this means that uh, the majority of Africa's population does not have access to high-speed internet, as you rightly mentioned, and therefore, these are key areas to focus on in, in dealing with the matter. President Kagame told participants that Rwanda has made significant investments in broadband infrastructure, and this has enabled the country to connect most of its facilities to Internet, commending the World Bank for its support in that area. In Rwanda, we have made a significant investment in the broadband infrastructure. We have been able to reach over 95% broadband coverage. If you look at uh, uh, our country health sector, for example, uh, most of the facilities in Rwanda are connected to the internet, just to give that example. I should that add that therefore uh, our partnership with the World Bank has helped us to tackle digital barriers and I wanted to take this opportunity to I uh, appreciate uh, you, President uh, Marpas, and the World Bank for having been of great help in this. The head of state also noted that the East African community has come closer together thanks to the establishment of internet-enabled cross-border payment systems. However, he believes that such regional payment systems and technologies will keep evolving. It will evolve. Uh, there has been uh, effort across the region during the integration process of uh, a region. For example, if you take the East African uh, uh, community, uh, there has been harmonization of uh, a number of things, uh, including looking at, therefore, how that can be served to the point that uh, from one place to another, it's like moving uh, within a country in itself. So the East African community has more or less come closer together uh, in the sense that it becomes one big country that brings the uh, number of countries uh, that are partner states uh, uh, together. 
So I, I think that is uh, well underway. It's being discussed. It's looking at uh, uh, how we can even have monetary union. Uh, under that, therefore, different uh, harmonization uh, activities and services will be undertaken uh, to ease or, on the movement and therefore the currencies uh, and the payment within the payment system uh, as it is. The head of state also called for global partnerships and the right politics in mitigating the risks of new technologies. He added that Rwanda has invested in the inaugural regional center for fourth industrial revolution as one of the measures to mitigate the risks of new technologies. First of all, one has to be aware real, of the risks involved with the, these new technologies. And therefore, people have to take steps uh, to, to make sure that uh, risks are mitigated, but at the same time, harness uh, the uh, productivity and efficiencies and uh, all the values entailed in, in these new uh, technologies. And therefore, people have to think about safety in, in all forms indeed. And um, being aware of the, of the risks, of course. Um, so within our own system, for example, in Rwanda, uh, we officially launched recently in, in Kigali, the first center of the fourth industrial revolution in Africa, in partnership with the World Economic Forum. This helps us to have a full grasp of, of the issues and therefore maximize on the benefits and also minimize on the risks as, as well as in between allowing for the freedoms uh, to do with the, the management of data and uh, allowing the people uh, to freely uh, reap benefits from that. So it, it's really, I think it will be built on how people come together to discuss these, put necessary laws in place, not only just nationally, but rather regionally, and also uh, learning from the best practices uh, uh, across the globe. Uh, it's not uh, an easy thing, but I think it is doable. It has just to be driven by the right politics as well, uh, so that uh, people understand the benefits this uh, is to people, uh, but also uh, and allow freedoms uh, to prevail uh, within, but at the same time um, uh, manage uh, these risks uh, involved. Well, in some related matters, users of mobile banking services say that it has made it easier, hence being able to have enough time to carry out other activities contrary to before as they used to spend so much time queuing in banks to access their finances. Jen Mutoni has more of this report. Devin Kogajana has been providing mobile transaction services in Kigali for four years. She says she withdraws money to use in providing services using an ATM card. She explained how she deposits and withdraws money using mobile banking. Rwanda is one of the fastest growing countries in various fields of technology. Some users of online banking services say that it has simplified the process of money transactions by saving time and also trusting the security of their money. Sana sana mobile banking. Mobile banking. With mobile banking, the bank is at the palm of your hands, wherever you can withdraw and send money easily. It saved us time and the struggle of queuing up, and the services are faster. Bankers say that despite the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, it led to the increase in the number of users of online banking services and that this is the only way to ensure the security of the customer's money. Despite the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, it led to an increase in the use of mobile banking, whereby people check their accounts, pay taxes, and paying employees, hence the queues at the banks reducing. Another thing it has improved is the security to do with people's money. The CEO for Access to Finance Rwanda and economist Jean Bosco Iachu commended Rwanda's progress in bringing services closer to the people through technology and that the rest is to ensure that both in urban and rural areas accessibility is at the same pace.
kandi abantu barayikoreshe batangiye kuryizera rero igikwire nuko dushira imbaraga mu people are using it and have trust for it what we have to do is to teach them how it works and help them understand that they can trust themselves to use it on their own there is a visible gap between the rural and urban for example in Nyarujenje 97% of the people we asked they told us that they use it while in Burera it is 38% which is proof that more work needs to be done in rural areas in terms of teaching people and also be assisted in terms of increasing capacity. According to the latest figures by the National Bank of Rwanda, from 2020 to 2021, mobile banking increased by 9% from 4,668,124 to 5,125,090. Mobile banking service users rose by 19% from 1,854,424 to 2,208,683. The use of online banking services increased by 23%. Bank card holders, known as ATM cards, increased by 45% from 2020 to 2021. Jane Mutoni, RTV News. Thank you, Jane, for that report. Now, the National Cyber Security Authority says that Rwanda has already invested heavily in the field of information security, which puts the country in the top 10 safest countries in Africa in terms of technology. She also continues. Banks and small and medium-sized financial institutions are commonly prone to cyber attacks by hackers. According to the National Cyber Security Authority, in 2018, the Rwanda Investigation Bureau estimates that in the 22 cases that were received, more than 289 million had been stolen from various financial institutions through hackings that year. The National Bank of Rwanda was able to contain the damage by recovering 208 million. Valens Tukesha, head of the legal committee at the Rwanda Bankers Association, says that at one point a robbery was about to be carried out in one of Rwanda's banks involving another bank's employees as they were going to steal more than 500 million Rwandan francs. Fortunately, this was discovered and stopped by the National Bank of Rwanda. It is indeed uh, a concern because you know why, why banks keep uh, clients' deposits, money, basically. So what happens is that uh, banks are also aware that the money, the deposits of the clients have, have to be safe because banks are, banks are trading in money. So all that they do, apart from maybe trying to comply with the central bank regulation on the cyber security and, uh, and all these other information related regulations or regulatory requirements, it is also important for banks to, to, to ensure that the, the systems that they are used are very well protected. So, um, in fact, nowadays I find that the one time I had a problem when, when I was trying, for me I do a lot of contract drafting and all that. So, one point I found that the contracts I was, I was sharing internally were, were blocked. Why? Because they had information that the bank feels, our, the, the, IT, the IT staff feel that that information should not be sent to anyone. For example, if information has elements of numbers and figures and all that, it may be blocked. So that it doesn't go to anyone. So there are such sophisticated security measures that banks put in place to ensure that information is secure and, and, and to, ins to ensure that uh, people that do not have any right to information do not access the information. Statistics provided by Elbert Dynamics Limited, a trading company operating in Rwanda, in line with the Locust Dynamics Company of Rwanda and the Israeli Elbit System Company, indicates that there are more than 80 ATM cards used in financial institutions for deposit and withdrawal, which were duplicated by thefts using technology, led last year and earlier this year. There were also more than 2,000 emails that were hacked by thieves in those days. Locust Dynamics CEO Wilson Kagabo says security is at the forefront of global business concerns. Uh, the, the report that was published this year by the Alianzi Group uh, for 2021 uh, uh, indicated that cyber threat was number one uh, on the list of threats that uh, lead to business uh, interruption. So it, was, it came top number one globally, it came top number one uh, on the African continent. So it's a, it's a, a problem, it's a, a challenge that uh, all states, uh, all companies, 
should uh, put in place measures to mitigate. Uh, it's always better to prepare yourself before the, you, you, you face the cyber attacks because that way you can minimize the uh, uh, business interruption. You can also minimize the loss. Uh, and LB Dynamics is here to uh, be able to help companies in Rwanda, organizations in Rwanda, uh, to prepare better, to train staff, to provide uh, solutions that will protect you uh, and your company, uh, but also to uh, intervene uh, in case you have a cyber threat or cyber attack. Rwanda ranks seventh in the top 10 countries on the African continent in preventing cyber attacks. A 2020 report by the International Telecommunications Union, released every two years, shows that Rwanda has a score of 79.95%. Shislen Kaiji, the director of the National Cyber Security at the National Cyber Security Authority, says some steps were taken for Rwanda to be ranked at that place. The key mission of NCSA uh, is to build capabilities and uh, skills necessary to protect the cyberspace uh, in Rwanda. And uh, with that, there are quite uh, various uh, mechanisms that have, put, that have been put in place to ensure uh, the resilience of ICT infrastructure. One uh, example I can say is about uh, cybersecurity awareness. Um, we have done different awareness uh, uh, sessions or uh, programs uh, uh, so far since the, the since the institution has been has been there. Uh, I can cite, for example, the uh, Cyber Security Awareness Month that happened last year in October 2021 to November 2021, where where with different stakeholders, uh, other partners uh, in this. We work together to raise the cybersecurity awareness, educating people on how they can benefit from uh, technology, the use of technology, but also how they can protect themselves um, uh, to not be victim to, do, to different cyber threats or, cy or cyber, cyber fraud. I think that's what is helping us to uh, raise um, uh, the state of cybersecurity, but also we work with different uh, sector regulators to ensure uh, the re to ensure the resiliency and the security of ICT infrastructure across different sectors uh, in Rwanda. On the African continent, the top countries are Mauritius, followed by Tanzania, Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, Benin, and Rwanda. It is a survey that was carried out in 194 countries using top five technological indicators, including ICT infrastructure and access, access to and use of ICT by households and individuals, use of ICT by business and ICT sector, and tread in ICT goods. Jane Mutoni, RTV News. Thank you, John, for that report. Now, the international law analysts note that Rwanda's decision to accept immigrants sent by the UK defines Rwanda's value for humanity. This is also reiterated by some non-governmental organizations that stress that Rwanda is response, responding rather to the concerns of those seeking asylum. Innocent Mugabo has this report. On April 14th, Rwanda and the United Kingdom signed a deal that seeks to give a dignified life to people who leave their countries to seek asylum in the European country. On the same day, the United Kingdom Prime Minister Boris Johnson stressed that the agreement reached between the two countries is a project that the two countries had discussed for nine months. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Vincent Biruta, noted that Rwanda's culture of welcoming refugees and migrants is something related to its history. Murunziza Joseph Rijarasa, a social justice activist, emphasizes that Rwanda is contributing to the restoration of human dignity. From the civil society perspective, uh, I think uh, Rwanda is doing what any responsible uh, government should do, because uh, government should have the moral uh, 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 responsibility of making sure that uh, citizens uh, uh, um, uh, catered for. So it's very unfortunate that uh, we have um, immigrants uh, in Europe and, uh, and, and, and no one is trying to 
see uh, how they can be they can be they can they can be assisted so uh, 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 I think Rwanda is doing this best from uh, uh, the legacy because this country had uh, refugees uh, who had been in exile for more than 30 years so and some of uh, those refugees upon return they contributed towards building this uh, this nation so given that experience i think rwanda is doing this because they understand the 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 the, 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 the challenges and the side effects of not having of not having a country the Anglican Archbishop Dr. Laurent Mbanda also shares his view on the Rwanda-UK migration agreement. The other message that really blessed me this last week is to see a country that is opening its arm to embrace and to welcome refugees, people who are probably rejected in other places, to give them dignity, to give them value. It is what a Christian can do. It is the human um, the, the, the humanity thing to do. It gives them dignity, it gives them value. I know there are people who are out there who are criticizing, but you know what? They have not lived their, that life. We as Rwandans have gone through that ordeal. We have been refugees. We have, we, we have been rejected in many different parts of the world. But when you see a country that is saying, you are welcome, we love you, we embrace you, we, we recognize you, your humanity, your dignity. It is just a noble act. It is just the human thing to do. It is just, I mean, I don't know how to express it, but I'm so proud of my country, and I'm so proud of our leadership, and I praise the Lord for that. Dr. Alphonse Malefu, a senior lecturer and international law expert, states that Rwanda isn't the first country to sign such agreements. Uh, this is not the first kind of agreement of, of that nature. Uh, we have uh, countries, for example, uh, Denmark, uh, Australia, uh, uh, recently uh, U.S. when it was relocating uh, Afghans who were working for uh, for it in, in in Afghanistan, they had to pass them through uh, uh, different countries for their screening before they are given uh, the right to to to, to reside uh, in U.S. They they were transited through Germany, uh, Italy. Uh, Qatar, Bahrain. So there is no uh, something that you would say is unusual uh, about this agreement between Rwanda and the United Kingdom. Uh, the only uh, question I think people need to, to, to be uh, reflecting on is how uh, are they going to be treated? And if in the agreement there are areas that show that their treatment will be in violation of their rights, for example, that is something that people can discuss. It is in this aspect that he also notes that Rwanda's actions do not violate any international laws, but are in line with the protection of human rights and relief. The international uh, agreement uh, of 1951 relating to the status of refugees does not uh, provide uh, a definition and the procedure on how states accept refugee status for those who come to seek refugees. That is something that is left uh, for uh, national laws. So you will find that someone will apply for a refugee status or will come uh, as an asylum seeker. You, that person will apply and remain in a situation that is uh, uh, deplorable, I would say, until they are given that... Uh, that right uh, and protection. So if uh, uh, Rwanda is proposing to provide uh, a better humane alternative that would help in uh, resettling uh, and, uh, and, uh, and keep them in a dignified life uh, as they wait to be, uh, as they wait for the for their decision about their status to be uh, reached, 
uh, that is something that I think people should appreciate. It is expected that the arriving immigrants sent from the UK will be provided with vocational training and other development opportunities and will also be allowed to leave the country and compete for various jobs. Innocent Mugabo, RTV News. And thanks, Innocent, for that report. Now, this Wednesday, Senate President Augustin Yamulemi and his two vice presidents, Nira Safari Esperance and Alvera Mukabaramba, met with the ambassador of the state of Qatar to Rwanda, Ms. Faisal Mubarak al Shawhani, at the parliamentary building in Chimihura. Oh, now, following this meeting, the ambassador of Qatar told the media that their meeting reviewed ways to initiate parliamentary relations between the parliaments of Rwanda and that of Qatar. Actually, today I'm happy uh, to be here in Parliament building, uh, sharing with His Excellency Mr. Augustine our negotiation and our uh, uh, important relationship between the, the two countries, uh, between Kigali and Doha, and we are looking forward uh, to deal more, in, uh, especially in the Parliament uh, uh, process and the issues between here and, uh, and Qatar, uh, Shura, Majlis Shura, we call it uh, Shura Council, uh, looking to be uh, more active in this side. That's all we had for you tonight from me and the entire news production team. Many thanks for your company tonight. We wish you strength and hope in the coming days. I'm Ethan Tashabia. Bye for now.